Welcome to The Reality Revolution. I'm your host, Brian Scott. Today's episode is dedicated to reality shifting. After many requests and some research, I have discovered the online community and different videos that are dedicated to a concept of reality shifting. This reality shifting is different a little bit than the sort of reality shifting we've talked about on the podcast, such as quantum jumping and reality transurfing. But in many ways, it is the same thing. I'm going to go over what I understand about the current popular movement that I've seen on YouTube and on Reddit. And I'm going to give my own experiences in reality shifting. There's a lot of stuff that I'm going to talk about on this video that I haven't talked about before. Some things that I experienced in my own quantum jumps and reality shifts. We're going to talk about the differences between lucid dreaming and reality shifting. It's very interesting if you just type in reality shifts and go online, you're going to find some very interesting videos. A lot of them are pretty much from the same age group. You have people in their 20s that are starting to experience reality shifts in a variety of different ways. Many of these reality shifts are entirely fantasy based, which is not bad. But there are people that are reporting that they've shifted to a reality where they've lived at Hogwarts for six months, or they were on Avatar The Last Airbender, or the Marvel Universe. That's a pretty cool and an amazing concept, and I love it. And I have experienced similar things. I'm going to discuss whether or not this is the best or rational way to do reality shifting, and perhaps I can align some of what I've learned in reality shifts and integrate it with these reality shifting methods that are being experimented on. Right now, we are entering into an age of multidimensionality and we are, as a species, experiencing this multidimensionality on a variety of different levels. And it's no surprise that younger people are starting to experience more profound reality shifts than people that are in their 50s or 60s. The reason is, I believe that there are many souls that have come and incarnated on the planet that have much more advanced understandings of reality. And naturally, they are starting to explore the very dimensions and the boundaries of these different dimensions around us. More and more, people are starting to report experiences in which they explore parallel realities. The majority of the videos that I found I would say are exclusively in the realm of lucid dreaming. There is a portion of the community of reality shifters that are very offended by the idea that it's lucid dreaming. And they will emphatically say that it's something different than lucid dreaming. The majority of the reality shifters are talking about an experience that is happening while they're in their body, in their mind, placing their mind in a fantasy like state. There are some amazing YouTubers that have discussed shifting time so that you can experience a week in an hour. And I have done some of this. So it's really exciting to see some people experimenting with reality shifting on an advanced level at such a young age. It gives me hope. It's so exciting. I'm going to bring what I've learned about reality shifting to this discussion. And if there are reality shifters that end up watching this video, Perhaps what I've experienced can help you to solidify whatever reality you're going into. And more importantly, perhaps if you'd like, you might be able to shift into these realities permanently if that's what you'd like to do. I have discussed many times about my own experiences in shifting into parallel realities. I experienced a parallel reality shift that I did not intentionally do that was so shocking to me that I thought I perhaps was experiencing some sort of psychosis or mental illness. Now there is one YouTuber when I looked up the reality shifting videos that was very critical of reality shifters saying that they're experiencing a certain sort of psychosis. It's important for you not to think in these terms and not to equivocate any sort of mental illness or anything 
on that level, when you talk about these things, as soon as you start to consider any sort of psychosis or mental illness, when you talk about reality shifting, there's a portion of your higher self that sort of stops you from shifting properly. It's a very important belief that you need to eliminate. If you're shifting into realities, there is nothing wrong with you and you're not insane and you're not experiencing any sort of psychosis. You're not escaping from the outside world. It is an experiential situation where you are experiencing another reality. Now I could talk for hours on the science of quantum mechanics, quantum jumping. Please check out my book, The Reality Revolution, The Mind-Blowing Movement to Hack Your Reality. Many of these reality shifters are a part of this reality revolution and they don't even know it. I discuss the different scientific phrases and terms that are used on a quantum physics level. But to go back to my story, I had a traumatic event happen where I was shot at. I had a home invasion. It was sudden and shocking. I had done a lot of meditation before. My consciousness was in a certain state. But after this event had happened and I survived, it was as if I had entered into a parallel reality. At first, I didn't know I had. I had objects that were missing, new objects that appeared in my home that I know for sure that I never would have purchased or had. I had people contacting me, claiming to be best friends with me that I had never remembered talking to. So at first I thought maybe I had a memory problem. My dad had undergone dementia, so am I experiencing some sort of early onset dementia? So one thing I'm really good at is researching. So I researched this so extensively on every single level, experientially. I experimented with a variety of techniques. The big thing that really shocked me the most in the place that I lived, I would go for a walk or a run nearby and I would always walk through a lot that was an empty lot. And then one time, after this happened, I go on my normal run and there's a building there that had not been there before. I've had interviews with people that have experienced similar things where lakes showed up. One of the most amazing books that you need to read is Reality Shifts by Cynthia Sue Larson. You can check out my interview. I was very nervous when I interviewed her. Hopefully I get a chance to talk to her again soon. She really talks about the science and the dynamics around reality shifts that happen. It's something that's been happening to people for a long time. In my own case, the tangible material reality that I existed in, in my CR, which is a term that shifters use for current reality, it changed. I had no choice to go back. I wasn't experiencing this shifted reality from another place. I was experiencing it in the now, in the real. So, I then realized if I can shift into a parallel reality on accident, can I possibly shift into a parallel reality on purpose? And I read everything I possibly could. I found a book called Reality Transurfing that was a mind-blowing book that talked about the dynamics of traveling through different timelines and realities, and it really set some ground rules for how I could shift into real realities. Along the way, Reality Transurfing also teaches about lucid dreaming. And I started studying Neville Goddard, who taught how to use sleep and lucid dreaming as well. There is a difference between lucid dreaming and shifting into real parallel realities, but not as much as you think. When you learn how to lucidly dream, there's a couple of things that can happen in the dream state. In the dream state, you experience a reality. It may be an actual reality and it also may be a dream. So when shifters argue that it's not lucid dreaming, I get what they're saying. You can kind of identify if you're in a dream space that's being created by your mind or if you're in an actual reality by the density of the matter around you, your senses are more alive. You can smell, you can taste, you can touch. And so what is happening is some people are getting really, really good at advanced lucid dreaming, pulling them into multidimensional realities 
in the sleep state or in deep meditational states. And it's addicting. It's fun. It's exciting. But you don't necessarily shift into that reality permanently. That can create problems and schisms and a variety of different things. And I will argue that it will shift your actual reality if you start to understand the basic dynamics of quantum mechanics. The reason that lucid dreaming is important, no matter what, if you're interested in creating your reality, is that in what is happening now, as you are awakened in this awakened state, listening to my voice, you're still in another level of a dream. It's a big realization. The reality that you think of as tangible reality in which you wake up, go to work, go to school, watch TV is a dream. You dream within the dream when you go to sleep and dream. So you're learning about how to interact in a dreamlike environment when you sleep. So when you become lucid in your dreams, you become lucid in your waking state. A lot of what I've taught about lucid dreaming helps you to become lucid in the waking state. They are interrelated. And I would bet many of these reality shifters that have gotten very good at lucid dreaming have noticed tangible changes in their own reality, even though they've been exploring these amazing fantasy worlds that they're going to in reality shifted states. There are a variety of ways that you can lucid dream. The key is to give yourself triggers on a regular basis in the waking state that become habitual for you that you end up doing when you're in a dream state. So you can ask yourself, am I dreaming? You can ask yourself, are you dreaming? If you see a car, every time you see a car, am I dreaming? Or every time you see a bird, am I dreaming? There are some things that you can do in a lucid dream that will awaken you in the dream. Like you can look in a mirror. One thing I've heard is to plug your nose and try to breathe in through your nose. A lot of times in a very lucid dream, you'll still be breathing through your nose. Once you become aware of that, then you know that you're dreaming and you can control the dream. If you check out my episode on understanding dreams, there are different levels of dreams. Some dreams, I believe the creator is talking to us, giving us symbolic messages. In those dreams, it may be harder for you to lucidly dream because it's like you're being sent a message. And in those cases, you're just observing and hopefully you remember the images that you see. In some cases, it's just a dream that you're creating your own virtual reality, your own simulation. And then in other cases, in the dream state, you've been pulled into an actual reality. When you start experimenting with the lucid dream state, in the quantum jumping state, you can purposely go in to some of these realities by programming yourself prior to going to sleep or prior going into a deep meditational state. There are several amazing techniques that many of these reality shifters have recommended that I also recommend that I've used that are very powerful. As with all things, there's a certain language that is formed around reality shifting, different than reality transurfing. They use these abbreviations to discuss the world that they're shifting into. For instance, the CR is the current reality. The WR is the waiting room. And the DR is the dream reality. A lot of times, the processes that shifters are using involves while going into the sleep state, you enter into sort of a waiting room. And from that waiting room, you can enter into your dream state. Some people skip that. But the DR is the dream reality. The interesting trend that I've seen with reality shifters on TikTok and on YouTube is that many of them want to explore fantasy worlds. And I get it. I refer you to my episode from Neville Goddard, There Is No Fiction, and also my discussion with Frederick Dotson when we discussed the idea that there is no fiction. So whenever you see some show on TV that seems crazy, if you're watching Harry Potter and you see Hogwarts, you watch my favorite, you know, anything in the Marvel universe. It's real. It's a real reality. Where did we get those ideas? Where did they come from? Oftentimes they come from a portion of our mind that is connected to those realities. Don't dismiss them. Don't dismiss fantasy worlds as being irrelevant and a part of our imagination because our imagination is 
God. And when we access these uh, wonderful fantasy states, assume that they're real. It's more fun that way. Star Wars is real. Harry Potter is real. All of them are real at the same time. And I powerfully believe in experiences that I've had. When you travel into these places outside of the earth, all of it is consistent. All of it is real. And there's planets where all these things are happening and you can travel there. But you must understand what's going on and some of the things that can happen. In my own case, I freaked out. I had not intended to jump into a parallel reality. Too much was different in my world. Movies were different. Friends were different. A variety of things were completely different. So I was concerned. Was I still alive? Somebody had shot me and the bullet bounced off my back. It seemed unrealistic. There's no way that bullet could have bounced off my back. I found some plausible physics explanations for it to make sense. But I really questioned if I was actually just dead in a dream state. It was something I had to know. It became the focus of my life. So I studied everything I possibly could about shifting into parallel realities. Everything I possibly could. I even went to physics professors, not just calling them, but actually went to a, a local university and walked into the office and tried to sit down and talk to a physics professor. Over time, I felt like I had a better understanding of what kind of shifts had happened. And then, because of the situation I was in in my life, I started to experiment with shifting on purpose, moving myself into other parallel realities. The theory for parallel realities is very fascinating, and there is a many worlds theory. I could go on and on about it. It's very interesting. The idea is that every decision that you make can branch off into multiple realities. So if you decide to open that refrigerator and drink that Coke, or if you leave that Coke alone, two different realities then occur. These are realities. Now, using the understanding from reality transurfing, you don't need to get caught up in the logistics of it. It's very possible that alternate reality is just an informational space. There is a space that you can go into, which is similar to the waiting room that they talk about, that is the alternative space. There's a space in the void, in the quantum space, where there is a minimum, the information for all of these different realities. So what you may be doing when your reality shifting is exploring this alternative space and actually bringing about this alternate reality and manifesting it within your mind and experiencing it. My own explorations never went into shifting while in a dream state because it felt so temporary for me and I didn't want to come back. I had bigger goals and bigger things that I wanted to do. I wanted to travel permanently into other realities. But the techniques that the reality shifters are using are actually pretty good. And I am convinced that if they're continuing to use these techniques, they're going to shift into realities permanently. And that might be a good thing. Depends on what you're wanting to shift into. The first thing is the preparation for your shift. This is the thing I teach in the Aura program, is preparing for the shift. There's a process that you need to go through to prepare for the shift into another reality. I believe it. you want to be patient with it and take some time. Don't get into a big hurry about it. Ask yourself questions. If I wanted to shift into any reality, where would I shift to? Start scripting it out. The who, what, when, where, and why. Don't get into specifics like you're going to have this thing happen because that takes away from the play of that reality. That reality is existing and you don't know what's going to happen. Anything could happen. You could walk outside and get in your car and be in a car accident. There's an aspect to the reality that you're going into that you want to allow for. So you're not pretending a specific situation, but an actual world. Who you are, what you are, what you do, maybe where you live. Those are the kind of things. That's the way that shifters are doing it now. And they'll write out a script. They'll write out a detailed script of the world that they're going to. And one technique is the pillowcase technique. So you just put it under your pillow. 
I find this so powerful. I've even found using sigils or symbols that equate what you're trying to enter into. And just by touching, sometimes you, you put your hand under the pillow and you sort of touch that piece of paper. It subconsciously reminds you of this world that you've scripted. Then you want to put yourself in the right sort of brainwave state. You can do that through short meditation. And when you do the short meditation, you can move your brain from the beta level, which it normally is in an awaking state to the alpha and then theta and delta levels between alpha and theta. You're going to have a good chance of being in the sort of brainwave state where you can enter and shift into a reality in your dream state. You can make it lucid. I just recommend exploring the dream state and trying to remain awakened in the dream state and then taking notes. You're going to have some lucid dreaming experiences where it doesn't feel like you're in a reality, but you're in a sort of sandbox of your mind where you're just playing around. And then you may have an event where it's vivid. It's real. The matter that you're interacting with is dense. You can touch the rock. You can taste the pizza. Everything about it is amazing. There are some amazing stories of people that have reality shifted. And I'm not going to say that you're going through any sort of psychosis and there's nothing unhealthy about it. You're exploring the reaches of your consciousness. That's fantastic. As I said before, there are people that have explored living at Hogwarts for months at a time. In your scripting, you can equate the time differential saying every hour here is a week there. And people have reported experiencing these time differentials. If you make it your intention, you can experience it. The only thing is, it's pretty radical to live in an environment for six months and then awaken back in your body. And you're going to come back to the current reality in every case. There are ways that you can come back to your current reality uh, that they recommend. You can give yourself a keyword. You can use certain touches with your hand, pinch yourself in certain places. So a lot of times people will give themselves a way to remove themselves from that reality so that they can escape so that they don't necessarily get stuck there. That's one reason I don't like to play around with it too much. In those cases, I like to become lucid in my dreams. But as Vadim Zeeland warns in his amazing book, Reality Transurfing, it's very possible that some people get stuck in those realities. How do you know? When people disappear, how do you know that it wasn't them shifting into a reality and then they just simply disappeared? They couldn't find where they were. I believe that's a real possibility and it will become more of a possibility as we start to interact in a multidimensional environment, which we're learning to do now. This is the very beginning of learning to interact in a multidimensional density. What we're experiencing in a multidimensional density is unlimited possibility. You're not just in one reality, you're in billions of realities. And while you're in this reality, you can still explore these other realities. They will open up aspects of yourself, help you to understand yourself. Another technique that shifters use now is the Raven method. They sit back on a bed in what they call the starfish position, just arms out. Your head is flat, not on a pillow. And you count down from a hundred and you give yourself an affirmation of a reality that you're going into. You have written it out specific to your situation and you say that until you fall asleep. In many cases, people are experiencing shifts and discussing them, talking about them. And I would love it if you have tried any of these techniques or after this video, you try these techniques and you experience a shift in your reality in that dream state, put it in the comments. When we talk about these things, it's always a laboratory experiment and it is complicated. The fourth density new earth environment that we're entering into is complicated. It's complexity that we're entering into. So there's a lot of aspects to it. There's a lot of different ways to shift. The aspect that I wanted to talk about that I've explored that I haven't really gone into detail with on the podcast. And there's a variety of reasons is quantum jumping into actual realities. I made it my intention to quantum jump into realities that I wanted to live in so I could have certain relationships so that I could find prosperity so that I could heal, overcome addictions, a variety of things. When you start to do this, 
you're doing more than just shifting into a temporary reality that you have to escape from. My desire was to find a permanent reality that I could be in. I knew it was possible because I had accidentally shifted into a reality and in the process of questioning my own sanity had discovered that I was perhaps still sane, but there are some dynamics to it. The barriers between realities are slowly disintegrating. So you'll find yourself moving into different timelines and different places. And then you can get induced into realities. It's happening a lot now. The biggest aspect that is not discussed by a lot of people that are experimenting with shifting is the higher self. The higher self is a really important key aspect to your shifting. There is a portion of you that exists millions of years in the future that knows all of the different possible things that can happen to you in all the different realities. If you read about it in the law of one material, you can find out more information. The higher self is a real thing. It is with you all the time. It will not violate your free will and it is guiding you and it's protecting you. It knows if you jump into a certain reality and get stuck there that you'll go insane. You woke up in the Lord of the Rings and you start getting attacked by goblins, then it's just not something that perhaps you want to experience. So the higher self can stop you from transferring into that reality. A lot of times when people are shifting into realities, it's very, very subtle. All of the aspects and dynamics of the reality are the same. You have the same friends, you live in the same house, you drive in the same car. So that limits the unlimited possibilities that you have available to you to a, a very small number of realities, but there's still an immense number. There is a tremendous number of realities that are almost identical to what you have, but then are different. What you're trying to do is transfer your consciousness that you are in now in your mind to a body in another reality. That is different than shifting, but I believe that the process of reality shifting awakens your mind into a state where you can actually quantum jump. The big difference, and I talk about it in my book, and you can also see a discussion of this in Cynthia Sue Larson's book, as well as my interview with her. The major difference between the two is energy. If you study quantum physics at the subatomic level, they've tried to actually, with a camera, watch a quantum jump, watch a subatomic particle move from one place to another. It doesn't just move. It disappears and shows up in another place. And the more research they would do, they would find out that particle goes through it an energy exchange. So there is a burst of energy that's required for it to jump from one place to the other. So what we're trying to do with quantum jumps and quantum surfing, I call, because really you're jumping onto a wave of energy is you're trying to build up enough energy to move into this new reality space. The reality space is like an ocean of energy that you're jumping onto. If you've ever surfed before, it's a very good way to understand it. That's why I always like trans surfing as a word. The idea is before you can jump on the wave, you have to start swimming and paddle as fast as you can so that your speed is equivalent with that wave. And when you jump on the surfboard, you're already moving at the speed of that surf. So all around you, you're in this environment of energy. So I've experimented with a variety of different techniques. As I discuss in my book, I have some energy exercises that use Qigong and it's tapping or certain yoga techniques, the five Tibetans, where you ramp up the energy in your body. You move it up your body. You can do that with meditation as well. The quantum jumping meditations are about squeezing the muscles in your body after you've generated this energy. Cynthia Sue Larson also recommended this in my interview with her is that you do some energy exercises. You can work out, but sometimes that can take your energy. You want to do exercises that amplify your energy. That can be a variety of different techniques, but the energy exercises in my book is a good place to start and you can find something that works for you. Some sort of simple Tai Chi or 
Qigong technique that will amplify your energy. You want to have this amplified energy when you jump into the other reality. So then what you're doing is you are scripting out what you want just like we did before. I recommend that no matter what, whatever your intention is, start scripting out what it is you want. There are a variety of techniques for scripting and scripting for quantum jumps, you can script specific events. Scripting for reality shifts, you're scripting just the reality that you're entering into and it depends on your intention of what reality that you want to shift into. But you can shift into any reality if you start to use these techniques. A lot of people think it's going to be easy and they get easily distracted, but it really is a technique that you need to learn. It's a skill that you learn over time, just like playing in any instrument, learning any skill. It takes a little bit of time. You get better and better at it. So I started doing these techniques and I've given my own meditations on the channel to let you experience in these quantum jumps. And the big thing that started happening for me, it's really important for you to understand is I could not talk about it if something crazy happened. As soon as I started talking about it, then I would be pulled back into the old reality. So I might have waken up and I'm, there's a different car. If I say anything about that, it's almost like immediately the car shifted back. I've had some amazing events like that happen where the reality was absolutely different to the point where I could start questioning my own sanity. As soon as I start talking about it with my wife or friend, anybody in any, any way, shape or form, then it seemed like the shift would stop. So for instance, I do a particular quantum jump with an intention on some specific thing that I want to experience or shift in my reality. And then I notice I have some episodes on my channel that I'd never remember recording. And I notice there's a new fast food joint that's right down the street that has been there forever, but I have never seen it. If I was to go and tell people about it, hey, I shifted into this reality and there's this new fast food joint that everybody says has been around forever. I would then go back and, and show them and it's gone. It seems like my higher self would slowly shift me back. So I started keeping my mouth shut. I've had people ask me, oh, you've experienced some great shifts and things in your reality. Tell me about one. And I used to do that, go into detail about things I'd experienced or manifested through these techniques. It would always work against me if I talked about it. So I found that I had to be open and accepting of these shifts. My higher self needed to know that I wasn't going to go insane, that I wasn't going to go crazy. Check out my higher self meditation. Link yourself to your higher self. Learn how to talk with your higher self. Move into the energy of the higher self. And so as I would quantum jump into these realities, and I would obviously have something crazy around me happening, I might even see an object literally disappear in front of me. I just keep it to myself. I don't tell anybody about it. That is one of the most important things. Don't be afraid with a constantly changing reality. And then when your higher self knows that it's okay, it will open up more opportunities for you in places that you can travel and things that you can experience. Keep it to yourself. There's no reason for you to discuss it. You're not insane. You know with intention that you've traveled into this place, but you have to understand you're like an astronaut. A lot of times you don't know exactly what you're jumping into, but feel free that you can always jump back. You can always go back. You're anchored back to that reality. Just do another quantum jump back to that reality. Shift back into that reality. If this scares you, jumping into a reality that you don't want to jump into, then just do the reality shifting or don't even do anything at all. But you'll have an experience where you wake up in a different room. Some people have even reported waking up in a different room with a different partner. If that were to happen to me and it was my intention, then I would try to understand what was going on before I freaked out. The moment you freak out, you might walk out of the room and come back and it's your old partner again, right? So the big thing that I had to learn, that's the secret to everything, is keep your mouth shut about these reality shifts. If you're experiencing an amazing reality, 
Nobody else needs to know about it. You can help other people shift into realities, but it's important for you to understand that your higher self is protecting you. You have entities and guides protecting you. And in many cases, they don't want you doing these reality shifts. It's very traumatic in some cases. People waking up in another reality and they don't remember a lot of things and they get scared and they freak out. Your higher self will not let you do that. It knows what's going to happen. So you become dynamic and flexible multidimensionally. This is a hard thing to do. It's not what you think. You will be confronted with situations that make you think you've lost your memory. You haven't lost your memory. You simply did not experience it. Now, the most effective form of quantum jumping I found is energy exchanges, explosions of energy in conjunction with astral travel. When you learn how to leave your body and move your energy body around, you can, with that energy body, go into another universe. You shift into that body and then you stay in that body. There's some quantum jumping techniques that I use uh, using the Burt Goldman technique. And he essentially allows you to meet your twin in another universe. You merge with their energies and information, but you still come back to your CR or your current reality. That is very effective. And for many, many people, that's probably the most effective way. We're really experimenting with some crazy things when we do quantum jumps. If you haven't experienced anything like that with your quantum jumps, it may be because you don't believe it. It may be because your higher self is protecting you from major changes in your reality to avoid you from going insane or experiencing real psychosis over these major changes that happen. I was on the brink of this insanity when I started researching it and I found some information that helped me to understand that I wasn't insane, that I could reasonably understand why the reality had shifted around me and I was okay, I can handle it. That's what worked for me, but it took me a long time. The thing that happened afterwards, I did everything I could to transfer my reality. I tried drugs. I tried breathing techniques. I'd hang upside down. I'd use float tanks and isolation tanks and light therapy. I would use anything and everything that I thought that could change my consciousness. I was a consciousness explorer, and I believed the more I experimented with these different techniques, the more I could shift into other realities. I became addicted to it. When I would see a shift in reality and it was profound and real, it would blow me away. It's the reason I started this channel, because I wanted to share these techniques with everyone. But I also I learned it's a lot more complicated and there's a lot more to it. If your thing is reality shifting, where you're going beyond the lucid dreaming state into a real reality, I say go for it. It's fantastic. There's some amazing universes that I'm sure that you can explore and I can't wait to hear about them. And if you can dilate the time period that you're in there so you can experience it for a long period of time, then go for it. Don't get stuck in these worlds. Become aware the whole time that you're visiting that you're not staying. You're on vacation while you're there. The more you do it, you may learn more about yourself and the world that you're in. It may be a way for you to advance spiritually much faster than before by experiencing catalysts and wonderful experiences in these fantasy worlds. And if people try to tell you that it's not real, forget about it. It's real to you and that's all that matters. It's real to you. I believe you that it's real. There's a whole community around reality shifting that has some crazy things that have come up and I would not get caught up in all that. Experiment with this yourself. Find your own technique. The other thing I would say when you do quantum jumping, drink water, eat well. It can affect your body. You can become lethargic and tired when you shift into timelines. And once you start shifting into different timelines, it is important to understand that you can be induced into a timeline. This is the concept discussed in Transurfing and it becomes very important to understand. Your mind has dissolved the barriers between these different realities. So you might be watching TV and you see something scary on the news and that energy brings you into a different reality, an induced reality where a lot of the terrible things that you're seeing on the news are happening around you. 
So it's important that you keep your mind in a high vibrational state. You keep your life in a high vibrational state and you understand that you're riding waves of energy. You're going to shift into realities, but on a waking basis, you're also shifting because you're utilizing these mind techniques. And you may find that you enter into a reality that although it's not Hogwarts, it's pretty darn close and similar. There's a thing that happens in the CR that, or the current reality that occurs when you utilize parallel reality shifting that is discussed by Neville Goddard and many other expert manifestors. It's the bridge of incidents. You'll start to imagine that you're in this other reality in your dream and lucid state and shift. Then you'll notice in your waking state, a bridge of incidents occurs. Things that seemingly are understandable and realistic that slowly take you into a reality that's very similar to the reality that you're imagining. It may take years. It might just take months. It maybe takes a decade. Everything's different, but you'll slowly shift into a reality where it's very Hogwartsy, if that's what you want. Now, hey, I believe there's Hogwarts. I believe it exists. I believe you can go there. So I would be careful in reality shifting. I would intend to go into realities that you want to experience in this reality because there will be a slow molding that will happen from the shifted reality and the current reality. They'll slowly start to stream together and they'll bleed through together. And you'll notice correlations and similarities between the dreamed reality and the current reality. So lucid dreaming and reality shifting is super important because it gives you intention energy and it gives you the ability to shift your intentions and control your mind and ultimately control the living dream that you're in now. And as you do that, you start to realize I can shift this dream I'm in now. As we enter into the fourth density, new earth environment that we're experiencing now, that for many is a sort of reality revolution, there will be a time in the future where it will be constant reality shifts, where we will constantly be maneuvering through different realities on a regular basis, and it will be accepted. They'll be talking about it on the regular news. We have discussion of multidimensional realities in a variety of different amazing entertainment enterprises like Marvel Universe and so many other places. It seems like every time I turn on my TV or open up a comic book, it's talking about shifting into multidimensional realities. I could sit here and name like 20 different shows that have explored this concept. And the reason they're exploring this concept, everything from Black Mirror to Fringe to Rick and Morty is because in our unconscious subconscious, there is an understanding of this multidimensional concept. And we are learning about it as we bring it up in our stories. It's a real thing. And I see no problem in exploring this, but stay safe, stay positive, shift into realities that you want to shift in, focus on things that are loving. And the more you start shifting into a reality, you're going to reach a reality that you love so much. You're not going to want to shift anymore. And then it's all about staying in that reality, not getting induced into another reality bringing the energy into that reality and riding a wave, staying on a wave of energy that keeps you in that reality, understanding that you're constantly riding waves of energy. The biggest secret is to be open to change, adapting to shifts that are happening in your environment. That'll keep you mentally sane, knowing that things are going to happen. You're going to see crazy stuff in the world. Don't freak out. Don't create excess potential. Don't place too much importance on anything that's happening around you, knowing that you're continually moving in to the reality that you want to experience. There's a lot of subtle dynamics to this that I could go into further, but this is a good starting point, the sort of secrets of reality shifting. I would love to hear your stories. If you have reality shifted like reality shifters are talking about on TikTok and YouTube, if you think it's the same as lucid dreaming, and if you think we can travel into parallel realities permanently, as I say I have done, if you've done it, please tell me. We have the Mandela effect. Maybe the whole globe has transferred a couple times into parallel realities. And maybe you've gone into your own. When I bring these things up, I always get fascinating comments from people that have experienced parallel realities. And there's some amazing Reddit boards that have discussed these shifts. It's fascinating to me. I love to read about it, so please share your stories. 
In any case, you can find all episodes of The Reality Revolution at therealityrevolution.com. And welcome to The Reality Revolution. <laughs>